How to turn off and up because we have Fernand that's out there too, and it's like barely being mentioned. <laughs> there's Fernand. Yeah, that's in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, <laughs> in the Gulf of Mexico, there's Tropical Depression Eight in the Atlantic. Um, there's another one pending. It's like I have they a were map. just they were just like, there's Dorian, and you know we're just gonna follow you. Yeah, <laughs> like it's September. It's it goes from and it, it does this every year where you think, oh, it has been so, June was so quiet, mm -hmm. July's so quiet, nothing in August, and then. Boom. And I have a map. Yeah, I have a map I'll show you at the top of the hour here cool. that has everything kind of labeled and you get an idea of what it looks like. What folks are what are folks going to face when they walk out the door today? Not too much. It's pretty quiet okay. when you walk out. <laughs> <laughs> After all of that, it's 75 and clear outside right now. A little muggy out there early on in the morning. Again, you, you can feel slightly lower humidities in the afternoon. It'll be a small comfort and we'll talk about all of that. That's going to be coming up here through the next half hour. All right, thanks, Daniel. Right now, Hurricane Dorian is just east of the Florida coast, battering the state with, uh, with uh, battering the state and the Treasure Coast with tropical storm force winds. Here's a live look at Port Canaveral, where winds approach the 40 mile per hour mark all throughout the night. Dorian is a Category Two storm at this hour, with winds at 105 miles per hour. Hurricane warnings stretch from Florida to North Carolina as Dorian is expected to barrel its way toward the southeastern Atlantic coast over the next couple of days. Meanwhile, in the Bahamas, recovery efforts. Are are now underway following what the Prime Minister is calling one of the greatest natural cri national crises of the country's history. This is aerial footage from the Abaco Islands, which suffered the brunt of Dorian's fury. At least seven people are dead, with more deaths expected. Bahamians are using jet skis and bulldozers to rescue storm victims, while the U.S. Coast Guard and British Navy are getting food and medicine to survivors. Members of those rescue crews putting their own lives on the line to save the lives of those who made it through the storm and to recover the bodies of those who didn't. It came over the roof, I would imagine 21 feet at least. Uh, we were doing all right until the water kept coming up and all the appliances were going around the house like a washing machine. That's probably I got hit with something in there. And my poor little wife got hyperfermia and she was standing on top of the kitchen uh, cabinets until they disintegrated. And then I, 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 I kept with her and, and she just drowned on me. Meanwhile, transportation in the Bahamas is at a standstill thanks to the hurricane. This is video from Grand Bahama International Airport in Freeport. Dorian submerged the airport in six feet of water, shutting down the facility. Roads are impassable because of flooding and debris. From the Storm Team 3 Weather Lab, here's Daniel's True View forecast. And over the coming days, there's there's going to be a lot of chances to donate both time and and supplies, monetary funds and all of that down to the Bahamas. And I would urge anyone who could uh, to find local organizations who are down there who are going to be giving that back to the people who need all the help. Remember, we get these storms a lot here, too, and hopefully it never happens. But at some point, I imagine that someone in Louisiana is going to be asking for similar help from an international community from one of these storms. So again, if you have the ability to donate, I would highly suggest uh, that you do so. 75 in Lafayette right now, 76 out through New Iberia. You've got the lower 70s in Alexandria with Lake Charles at 77. Nice clear skies out there with Abbeville at about 73, 71 for Opelousas. 75 here in the Hub City with winds out of the northeast at about five miles an hour. You've got clear skies out there. Dew point sitting down at about 72. A little bit on the drier side when it comes to, to the humidity. And we're not going to see much in the way of rain chances either. So that allows those temperatures really to get up there without those clouds to get in the way. You're going to see those temperatures skyrocket. We're going to get well into the into the mid and even upper 90s by the end of the afternoon. Heat index sitting up in the triple digits again could always be worse. We're, we're missing the, the brunt of the humidity that we can see sometimes this time of year. So at least we've got that going for us. But no matter which way you look at it, we've got a very hot uh, but fairly dry day coming up. All through the night tonight, not too much going on. Nice clear skies. Temperatures should drop down into the mid 70s once again. We repeat this forecast again for your Thursday. We're quiet all the way through the rest of the work week. It is going to be on the hot side. We've got probably one of the hotter stretches of days that we've had so far this year. Temperatures pretty consistently getting in the upper 90s. I think we could probably see close to 98, 99 degrees by the weekend. A lot of sunshine out there again. Make sure that you just drink plenty of water. Try and find AC when you can, and uh, we'll start looking for a cold front and see if we can get these temperatures knocked down at some point in time this month. Guys, 